You could go to the courthouse and get married and it would be cheap, but the reason why people don't do that, the reason why people have weddings is because it's a milestone in their lives. They want to pause and they want family and friends to come together and recognize that fact. You're buying a dress, you're buying space, you're buying food and a minister, cosmetic services. I try to strike a balance between what they look like normally on an everyday basis and what they would look like if they were dressing up for an important function. I think for your funeral, you should look like you were going to a wedding. When someone's being embalmed, they're laying on a table and gravity is pulling at their features. It's pulling the corners of their mouth out. So a lot of times what I like to do is fill those corners in with a little bit of wax and cosmetize over that wax with the same color as their base to sort of shorten their mouth a little bit, which creates a more natural appearance and uh, remedies that drawn out look that sim seems to happen after embalming. It's not uncommon for an embalmer to embalm someone that they know or a member of their family. That's the one thing that we can do for that person. That's the skill that we know. That's how we can serve them at that time. It's therapeutic as an embalmer. It's no different than if you were a nurse and you were taking care of them as they were dying. The first thing I do is, is grooming. And that includes cleaning under their fingernails, shaping their fingernails, tweezing any hair. I'm always very focused on what I'm doing and doing it properly and correctly. So I, when I'm working, I'm really focused on a very small area and I'm not thinking necessarily about what their life was like because I'm, I'm just so focused on specifically the task at hand. Second, I do supplementary chemical work. I inject their hands with additional embalming fluid using a hypodermic syringe. It sort of mimics the color of blood. I like to add additional dye to resemble fruit punch. Then that pink glow shows through. If the tips of their fingers are wrinkled, I may inject them with a tissue builder, which is a liquid, but once it enters the skin, it turns into a gel. The lips are generally wrinkled after embalming, and the tissue builder makes them smooth and builds them out again. It's easier to not necessarily dehumanize them, but distance myself from the emotional side of the fact that they've died. I was 16 or 17, I had just gotten my driver's license. We had a neighbor that passed away very young and very tragically, and my little sister was very close to her, and she was seven years younger than me. We attended the funeral, we were both crying, we were both so emotional. I remember viewing the person and thinking to myself, no, that doesn't, doesn't look like her. It doesn't look like I remember her. You know, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could maybe even do better. Finally, I do cosmetics. The cosmetic process basically starts by identifying any dark areas. If the dark area is on their hands, I like to use a spray cosmetic, essentially a flesh-colored spray paint. On the face, I'd like to use a cream cosmetic, and I use a special brush called a stipple brush, which recreates the look of pores. Then 
I like to add warmth to the face using a blush to the apples of the cheeks and the tip of the nose, the chin. I usually go over their eyelashes with a, a darker powder and then comb through those lashes so it looks very natural. Lips are the most difficult and time-consuming part. and They tend to dry out and turn dark. I apply wax to the, their lips to create an even lip line so that their mouth is completely closed when people are going about their lives, they're not thinking about death on a daily basis. When you work in a funeral home, that fact that you are going to die is right in front of your face every day. It's not just like doing someone's makeup, you know, when you get ready in the morning and it's in 10 minutes it's done. I consider myself an artist. I take something that's not pleasant and I make it at times beautiful. I find many times that the family comes in to meet me initially with a handshake and by the time they leave they're giving me a hug.